Hello and welcome to Teslanomics Live. I'm your host, Ben Sullins, and this is not live. I am actually on vacation with my wife right now, but I wanted to just give you guys an update on the two biggest stories that I thought were important related to Tesla from the prior week. I'm just gonna run through them here, and then I'll do the Q&A in a separate time, and we'll post that later in the week. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. The first story that I wanna talk about is the updates to autopilot for the Model S and Model X. And this comes to us in version 10.4. You can see the head of AI for Tesla here tweeting about it saying, it's very rewarding to watch the early feedback on our latest autopilot update, a result of a fairly extensive rewrite, working hard to get it, uh, working hard to get more of it polished and out there. So. This is exciting. I am really happy to hear that they're making progress on autopilot and it sounds kind of like what we'll see with the Model 3 dip that maybe they're past that slowdown and they're headed towards a place where we can see some new features. I foolishly got excited about this and then jumped over to the autopilot page on Tesla's website saw the stuff that they've listed at Enhanced Autopilot for a long time and thought that that was actually here. I thought that they were actually announcing that stuff. And as it turns out, no, that, that was not the case. But uh, there are a lot of videos out there and I wanna just show a couple of them here of people actually driving with it. They report really great things. Everyone seems to be really, really happy about it. Um, and so let's just take a look at one of those now. This video, and I'll put a link to all these here, uh, you can see on a on a questionable road condition, you know, the lines aren't great. You can see that the car is locked in and it's just handling it really well. In my own experience with autopilot, roads like this are very difficult. And first, you really shouldn't be using it on surface streets anyways. Uh, you only should really, really be using it on freeways and highways and things like that. But you can see that even as just a test, that this car, this new version of autopilot is doing tremendously well. And here's another one that has a bit more of a windy scenario. And this is something that if you've driven an autopilot, you know, can be kind of uh, kind of scary because sometimes it'll just lose control and want you need you to take over and really not be able to handle it. Here it's going up over a hill, which is also a challenge for autopilot. And it's just doing a really great job. So I'm sure maybe you guys have seen a lot of these videos out there. It's something that I mean, it, all of us are really, really thrilled uh, to see. Now, the thing about this that uh, someone posted on Reddit, which I thought was an interesting comment, is that because of this, there may be an unintended consequence here. We may start to get too comfortable with this and actually rely on it too much. Remember, it can't stop at a stop sign. It can't stop at a stoplight. So there are still a lot of things it can't do. And so we really need to make sure and just remember that it's really not full self-driving yet and we need to pay attention at all times as good as it is appearing to be in this latest update. Now, one of the questions I got related to this was, well, is this ready for the Model 3? And not that I've seen is the answer. If you take a look at the firmware upgrade tracker here online, again, I'll put a link to this, you can see the S and the X updates here. There's a lot of them that have been going out. But if you take a look at the Model 3, you have most everybody on 4.9, which is what I'm on. And then it looks like somebody just reported 10.1. I haven't seen anything about Model 3 autopilot updates and all that. Obviously, I'll let you know, or you know, you'll find it out on, online on Reddit or Twitter or whatever in advance of that. But um, if it does come, I will certainly go record some videos with that, share them probably on Instagram. Um, so there you have it. Autopilot updates, exciting stuff. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And the next story I want to talk about here is the one that is really interesting to me because first off, I love what these guys have done here because it's something I wish I had time to do, but it's that the Tesla Model 3 is now the best-selling electric car in the US. Now, we don't have official numbers from Tesla, so this is just using the Bloomberg tracker, and it puts them at over 10,000 cars total. These are just Model 3s, and that's over 737 per week, or 737 per week as of the latest recording. And the thing about that is that they had this big dip, and the recent dip was pretty significant. We, we understand that it was related to changes to the production lines at Fremont, and we know that there are some big changes, the Groman updates to the, the Gigafactory, and those were what Elon and JB had talked about in the earnings call as being the issue. So there, you know, me and a few other people were all kind of a, a little bit concerned about why Fremont was having changes, but if you take a look at their track,
tracker here for the weekly production rate. And, and this data is gathered kind of in the wild, right? Tesla is not providing this. So these are not official numbers from Tesla. But the data they're collecting and the methodology they, they're using, I think, is pretty sound. And so you can see that, yes, it dropped down significantly, and then it's starting to pick back up very quickly. So they're still far off from their target of 2500 per week by the end of March literally just a week and a half or so away. So, but it seems like the bumps are smoothing out. It seems like uh, some of the hurdles that they maybe had before with the production bottlenecks are resolving and it's it's picking up. I, I'm going to pay attention to this very closely as I'm sure many of you guys are. So stay tuned on Twitter and all that stuff because I will be covering this kind of in depth. Now, whether or not they can hit the 2,500 by the end of March, I'm not too concerned about because if the Groman stuff is the new automation stuff or the Gigafactory for Model 3 is in place by then, then we're going to see a, a 2x, a 3x, even Elon reported maybe a 4x jump in productivity in a very short period of time. And so even if they don't hit that by the end of March, I think you know by June we'll be looking at big numbers, or at least that's as it seems currently based on the data here. So I'm curious what you guys think about this. Uh, obviously, Tesla is still far off from their original estimate. Let me show you that chart down here. Yeah, so you can see they're still far off from that. But as these, these kind of S-curves work, we are still in the very early days. So there's a lot to come and I'll be following it. I'm sure you guys will. I'd love to know what your thoughts are about this down in the comments there. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, I'll be back to my regular live programming on Mondays next week. And until then, don't forget when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys back here next time.